Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about making the strong back for building a timber boat on and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Now I'm back in the workshop after the summer holidays, it's time to catch up on some viewer t-shirt photos that were sent in. This one here is Darren Byrne from Mornington Peninsula in Victoria. So thanks Darren, appreciate you sending that in. Originally I was looking at making an aluminium boat and I think that would be a very practical boat for me and the type of boating I do. But aluminium's relatively expensive and it also takes specialist equipment like a MIG or a TIG welder in order to put it together. When I thought about it, I thought, hmm, I don't really see the point in doing a video series on building a boat that most people wouldn't be able to have a go at themselves. And that's why I've decided to go with a plywood boat instead. This will ultimately be a relatively long series of videos as I go through the process of building it. I won't show every step of the way. I'll mostly try and focus on new techniques each time, you know, cutting them, fiberglassing, those kinds of things. But we will sort of see the whole process. So if you want to do it yourself, hopefully this will be a good set of tutorial videos that you can follow. I'll also intersperse them with a bit of mechanical stuff. So if this really isn't your thing, you know, you don't have to wait months before you get a video that is. As a part of this video series, I'm going to keep a reasonably accurate log of how many hours I put into the boat, and I'm also going to keep the budget on the board so I can see and keep track of how much money I've spent so far. So to get to the point we're going to arrive at, at the end of this video, I'll have spent 325 on the plans themselves, and I'll show you those in a moment. Then I spent about $300 on timber to build the strong back and some hardware, some screws, some bits for driving those, that kind of stuff, and $100 on some epoxy. I won't need all that epoxy to build the strong back, but I will be using a little bit of it. That's why I've sort of listed it here. The bulk of it will be used for the boat itself. I've probably over-engineered the strong back a little bit, so you probably don't need to spend anywhere near $300 in building that. You could do it much cheaper, I think. But I'm probably gonna keep it as a permanent bench in the workshop down the track, so because of that, I'm sort of building it quite strong. I'll probably keep it for a long time. If you were building it just to build the boat, then you want to get rid of it, then I'd be looking at much cheaper timber. I guess the first thing to do is show you what the boat's going to look like. So I've actually laminated the first two pages of the plan and popped them on the wall, if anything, just for a bit of motivation for me. So this is what it's going to look like. It's this sort of uh, open fishing boat style. And here's a bit of a plan view, a profile view. So it gives you an idea what style of boat it is. The plans come as a roll, completely printed plans. You get the first two pages you saw on the wall, then a whole lot of study plans that give you all the details. Then you also get a section that's completely full-sized panels that you can then trace onto the plywood and cut out. So you're in pretty good shape to go building this boat once you've got these plans. These plans are from Bowditch Marine Designs in Queensland and the boat itself is a Rogue Wave 16, so 16 foot or 4.87 metres I think it is. What we're going to build first though is the frame we build the boat on, the strong back, and I'll show you that. So this is it here, you can see it's just this sort of rectangle, it comes up like this, and then it has legs coming down, four different legs, and really that is about it. It's very much like a long big workbench, only lower and with no top on it. I've never built a boat like this before, but one resource I'm going to be making a lot of use of to try and learn along the way is that once you buy some plans, you get added into a particular Facebook group for builders where there's lots of really helpful people that you can ask questions. They post photos of their builds so you kind of get to see what each stage looks like. And that's already given me heaps more confidence than I had at the start. All right, let's get on now and knock this strong back up. I've chosen to build this strong back out of LVLs or laminated veneer lumber because being a man-made product, it's really straight for the whole length, and that's really what you want for this. Natural timbers will tend to sort of, as they dry, get a bit of a curve to them, whereas these timbers don't. You can see here, essentially, it's very much like a form of plywood, but just long dimensions. This one here is a six by two. This is what I'm gonna be using down the sides for the whole length. From the plans, I need to cut these to four, five, six, two millimeters. When you're measuring timber like this, just run the tape down one edge of the timber so you know you're not getting this sort of distorted measurement by being at an angle. Then as they say, measure twice, cut once. I've only got two of these bits of timber, so if I suddenly cut it 100 mil short by mistake, I have to go and buy more. Now I'll measure the second one and then I'll just compare them as a bit of a sanity check. 
these speed squares are really good. The only way you can go a bit wrong sometimes is if you accidentally sort of have it like this. So just make sure it is resting hard against the edge. A drop saw would be awesome for cutting these, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to use a circular saw and do some freehand cuts. Helps if you set the saw deep enough. The next thing I need to do is cut eight legs, 500 mil long, out of this ball before that are going to attach to this 6x2. Alright, so I'm going to go and cut out seven more of these. The length for these legs is a little bit of personal preference. I'm cutting these at 550mm. The idea is you want it low enough so that you can easily reach the keel of the boat because you build it upside down, but it also needs to be high enough that you can crawl underneath and do some gluing you need to do inside before you turn the boat over. Now all the legs are cut out, what I'm going to do is measure the depth of the bit of 6x2 here, so presumably around 6 inches, but, and then I'm going to measure a distance slightly shorter here, and then do a straight line across here, and then notch all the tops out, so that the timber here will actually be resting on the leg in a notch here. By doing this, and doing a straight line across all the legs, I'm making sure they're all as even as possible, which means the whole length of the strong back will sit as level as possible. I just measured the 6x2 and it's about 152 millimetres. So I'm going to notch that amount out of these legs with a straight line all the way across, measuring from the bottom up, and that'll make the legs as even as I can get them. What I need to do now is set the depth of the saw to the thickness of the 6x2, so I'll show you how you do that. So if I manually lift the guide up like this, and put the foot of the saw on. I can see at the moment it's deeper than the piece of timber. So what I'm going to do then is just lift the saw up on its foot. So now I've set this distance of the body of the saw up from the foot. I can lock it off and we've got the exact depth of cut we need to take out of those four by twos so that this will sit in quite nicely and flush. Normally when I do single cuts, to be honest I just hold my breath, but because I'm going to be doing a lot of cuts here, I'm going to put a mask on because I can't hold my breath that long. The first cut's the important one. This one has to be straight and exactly at this height. Then I'm going to do lots more cuts so I can take that section of timber away, but they don't need to be accurate. It's just important that they're between 5 and 10 millimetres apart. Any further and you won't be able to break the timber out. Now I'm going to do the remainder of the cuts just one leg at a time. It's only that bottom cut that had to be accurate for all of them. The end result is you end up with a whole lot of cuts like this to the depth we need. I'm going to hit them with a hammer, snap them off, and then just clean it up with a chisel. What you end up with is a notch out like this, which when turned the other way around is going to house that 6x2 like that. So I'm going to go on and do that to the rest of them and then we'll glue and screw them all together. I've got all of them notched now and then just loosely laying on the 6x2s. What I need to do now is figure out the position that I'm going to screw them on in. I can't see any exact positions for them to go in. What I can see though are measurements where the bulkheads need to go. So I think the primary thing is that they're not in the way of those. So one each end seems pretty obvious. And then here, I guess I can take this measurement plus about half of this to be in the middle here. And then we'll take half that measurement, this measurement, maybe half that one, have it here. And then the end again. So that's what I'm going to do. These are the screws I'm going to use. They're 75 millimetres, so long enough to go the 50 millimetre through the timber, then another 25 mil to lock in the other piece. 
I've marked all the positions for the legs now so that they're not in the way of those bulkheads. Now I'm just going to mix up a bit of epoxy, put a little dab on each one, screw them in place, make sure they're square, let those set. This epoxy glue I'm using is uh, Mega Epoxy 69. And if I weigh them, you can see this one's about 2 kilograms and this one's 2.2. I'm going to measure it up by weight, not volume. So all that means is I need to actually add a little bit extra of the part A by weight because it's denser and heavier. The container itself weighed 30 grams and now I've got 130 on the scale. So now I've got 100 grams of part A in there. And because the part B is less dense, I'm gonna go and add about 90 grams of that. Okay, that's spot on 220 now. So we've got 30 grams for the container, then 100 grams of part A, 90 grams of part B. The other thing is they said the best thing for stirring these is actually like a flat ruler, as well as a blade being good for mixing. It lets you get right into the corners of the container. So I'm just gonna put a dog of epoxy behind each one. Get it in position and then screw through. I'm gonna screw twice on each one to make sure it can't pivot. I'll put the first one in, then I'm gonna put the square on it, then lock it down in a second. What I've done now is cut and drilled four pieces that go across this way. The total distance is from the outside edge here is six, 10 millimeters. So it's 12, 20 total. What I've done then is taken away the 90 millimeters that accounts for the two longitudinal pieces to give us the 1130 here. I'm in luck in that Paul's turned up now, so I'm going to get him to give me a hand to stand this up and we'll screw it together in its final position. Actually, even if we have it like that, stand this one up. I'll get one in this end and one in that end. And then This is where I've got to now. It's pretty much complete. I may do a bit more bracing, but I reckon we've got pretty close. One thing I did have to do was hit here with a lump hammer to send this one forward a bit, just to square everything up. But now it's squared up. I'm happy with that to sort of let the glue set and do its thing overnight. Well, that's about it for today. Not the most exciting part of the process, I'll admit, but one of those sort of necessary evils. Next step is to cut out the bulkheads and attach them to the strong back. And even by that quite early stage, you start to get a sense of the shape of the boat, which is always fun. I've got a few other jobs to do along the way though. I've got this Honda cylinder head back from the engineers we machine, so we're gonna to have to put that back together. I'm also gonna do a timing belt on the green machine. I've also got this other motor that I kept when I did an engine swap, because I figure it's a pretty common motor, the type of motor maybe lots of viewers will have. So I'll show you that one. This is it here, an old Johnson 30. I figure there's got to be millions of these out here, so it's probably a good uh, motor to go through and just start trying to do some videos on, explaining different bits, working on different bits. So that'll be coming up in the future as well as the boat build. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you next week. See ya.